The island's architecture has become a big topic in the web development community in the recent months. So what is it? Why should you use it? And how do you use it with React? Well, let's take a look. So let's first of all take a look at what it actually is. So normally when you have your website right here, you will have something like a navigation, a content area, and maybe a sidebar. And most of the stuff will actually be static. So for example, in the main part, you'll probably only have text. In your navbar, you'll probably only have a few links and none of these need to be interactive using JavaScript normally. But maybe in your sidebar, for example, you might have a dropdown or something. And that dropdown will need some JavaScript to work if you're not using the default select from HTML. So there are multiple options of solving that problem. The first one being that you just write your whole site in HTML and only create that dropdown using JavaScript. That's fine, but not the best development experience. The next one would be to create the whole site using React. Then all of your components use React, which means that React will also need to keep track of all the components that only render text and will also need to render them initially, which also isn't what you want. The next option, which is quite a bit more common, would be using something like Next.js, which will render everything on the server first, and then hydrate it so that basically everything will become React on the client again, but you will have a whole rendered window in the beginning, which is better, but not ideal either. So that's where the islands architecture comes in. Here we can define that only our dropdown will actually use JavaScript or React for that matter, if you want a good development experience. So you can write your whole site in React and then Astro or whatever framework you're using will render all of it as HTML, send it to the client, and then do partial hydration. So it will only hydrate, so turn the components back into React, those components that need it, where you defined that you want that to happen, which is just awesome because you ship the lowest amount of JavaScript to the client and also have the lowest performance penalty on the client, which is just ideal. So let's take a look at how you would actually use this with React. Okay, so as I kind of hinted at before, we're gonna use Astro for this example. So to get started, we're just gonna run npm create Astro in an empty directory to create us an Astro setup that will allow us to use the islands architecture with whatever framework we want. In this case, it's gonna be React. So we'll just configure it to get us a, bit, a few best practices and all that stuff. Yeah, we would like to install the NPM dependencies. This will take some time, but as soon as you're done, you can just click through everything in the manner that you want. None of these options are all that important for you to be able to use the islands architecture and yeah, See you when it's done. Okay, so now that it's done, we can actually move on by already enabling us to use React with this because by default, Astro will actually use their own little component language, .astro files. So if we just look in here, you can see it's not quite React, it's Astro, but it's really similar. You could actually use this for the islands architecture too, but we are just gonna use React in this case. Okay, so now to move on, we are gonna run npx astro at react. And this will basically auto configure everything we need to run React with Astro for us. So you can just click yes for everything here and then you'll be able to use React in here, which is awesome. So now everything is done. We can already say npm run dev to start our Astro server. And if we just click here, we're gonna see the Astro getting started page loading up completely HTML based. So these components that Astro provided to us by default will all be turned into normal HTML, even though Astro uses a component architecture. So it's basically currently a static site generator. So now let's add our React component, which we're just gonna call test.jzx to make it return just a div, this was React. To basically indicate that the HTML that will be generated from this used to be React. So now we can just head into our pages index.astro file, which basically contains the application you just saw. And we're just gonna go and import this really quick from components slash test. And then we can just go down here and beneath the last card, we'll just say test slash. And now if we just head back, you can see this was React. But if we look at our network tab, we can see that this was already provided to us in the default HTML that was generated for us. So it didn't need to fill it using React, which is awesome. But now we might want to make this more interactive. So let's just take a look into our test component again and give it a style. And we'll make the background green for now. And we'll try to do this using state. So const bg and set bg equals use state. Our initial state is green, so we can now replace this with bg. And we'll add an on click in here. So on click equals set bg to red. Quite a simple exercise. 
We can see our this was react text now has a green background, but if you click it, nothing happens. And that is the case because our React component is currently only rendering HTML. There is no JavaScript getting shipped to the client, so how should it be able to react to a non-click event? Well, to enable us to do that, we can now just go ahead, add a second test component as a comparison, and now we are able to basically give it a little prop called client colon idle load only and visible. And these basically enable us to define how the island architecture should do this. So client idle would say, as soon as the page is done rendering and you have time to do something, render this component using React. Or you could say, this component is absolutely crucial to be working, so hydrate it with React as soon as the page is rendered. Or you could also say something like client only, which would tell it, don't render this as HTML at all, render it only using React. So it won't be there on the initial render, but it will come back in later, which might be helpful if you're using some libraries that aren't as compatible with something like Astro. Or you could also say client visible, which will tell Astro to only hydrate this component as soon as it becomes visible, which is also kind of handy. We're just going to go with client load to make sure that it definitely works. And now if we just head back, we can see this component is now clickable and turns red. This component isn't though. And if you just head into the inspect element view, you can see this is an Astro island. So it gets a little wrapper around there so that Astro is able to hydrate it properly. And the other one is just a div with a background green because the state was just removed and turned into a constant with green, which is awesome. So as you just saw, Astro and the island's architecture in general give you some huge performance benefits. So maybe you want to check out this video where I'll compare React to Svelte, which will also give you really good performance benefits over React. So let's check it out.